In the second part of this lecture, we address the case where we don't have only one magnetic circuit, but we have two of them. So, um, if we consider the figure that we have here, we could see that we have two coils. The first coil has a current I1. It creates a magnetic field, magnetic flux density vector B1 everywhere in space. Okay, so B1 is everywhere in space. And beside it, uh, near to it, there is another coil here. It has a current I2. It creates a magnetic flux density vector B2 everywhere in the space. And we could see some of the flux lines generated by the first circuit is actually linking to the second circuit. So they are penetrating the surface of these, of these turns here. And this will give rise to the concept of uh, flux, uh, mutual flux linkage. So if you want to calculate the flux in the first circuit, due to the magnetic field of the second circuit. What we have to do, we have to integrate over the cross section of the first circuit, which is S1, the magnetic field B2 dot DS. And this is what we have here. We call this one Epsi12. Epsi12 is the flux in the first circuit due to the current of the second circuit. And of course, an integral over the first circuit. Now, this flux, which is linking to the first circuit, um, of course, it will it will it will enclose the current I one n one times, and the n one is the number of turns of the first coil, and the n two is the number of turns second coil. So you can see this flux. This here will give rise to a flux linkage called lambda one two. Lambda one two is nothing but n one multiplied by epsilon one two because we have we have this flux going through the turns of the first coil n one times. So in general, if we have a circuit like this one. We say that the flux linkage for the first coil is equal to lambda 1, 1 plus lambda 1, 2. This is a flux linkage of the first coil due to its own current. This is a flux linkage of the first coil due to the current in the second coil. The same thing we have it for the second coil. We can say the flux linkage of the second coil is equal to lambda 2, 2 plus lambda 2, 1. Lambda 2, 2 is a flux linking the second coil due to its own current. This one here is the flux linking the second coil to the current in the first coil. Lambda 1, 1 is very easy. How do you calculate lambda 1, 1? We first calculate epsi 1, 1. Epsi 1, 1 is the integral over the cross section of the first conduct of the first coil of B1 dot ds. So we integrate that. We get epsi 1 and then we multiply this by n1. Uh, this will give us here this term which is lambda 1, 1. Lambda 1, 2 is the flux linking the first circuit due to the current in the second circuit, due to the magnetic field of the second circuit. So it's equal to N1 multiplied by Epsi12 as we said earlier. But remember, Epsi12 is proportional to the magnetic field of the second coil, and the magnetic field of the second coil will, will be proportional to the number of turns. So, so this lambda12 is really proportional to the product of N1, N2 and the, to the current I2, of course, because it is resulting from the magnetic field B2. Now, the same thing is happening for lambda 2, 2. Lambda 2, 2 is a flux linking the second coil due to its own current. So it's equal to N2 multiplied by Epsi 2, 2. Epsi 2, 2 is the integral over the cross section of the second coil of B2 dot ds. And, but this Epsi here is linearly proportional to the number of turns of the second coil. So this will give us N2 squared. The same thing is happening for lambda 2, 1 here, as you could see. So now this will give rise to the concept of mutual inductance. Mutual inductance means, and this actually is used very often in electromagnetics, when you apply a time-varying current in this loop, this gives rise to time-varying voltage between the terminal of this coil because they are coupled to one another. This is called uh, inductive coupling, inductive coupling of energy. And we'll be talking about that in chapter 9 when we get to Faraday's law. So by definition, the mutual uh, inductance between two circuits, between two coils, is equal, of course, there's M12. M12 is a, mutual, is a flux linking the first conductor or the first coil due to the current in the second coil. So it's equal, the definition of this mutual inductance is lambda 1, 2 divided by I2. So you, after you get the flux linkage, you divide it by the, by the current that caused the, the magnetic flux. So this is M12 is a flux linking 
the, sec the first coil due to the magnetic field of the second coil and because this magnetic field is resulting from the second coil we divide by I2 and of course it's equal to N1 Psi12 as we explained earlier the same thing you can define M21 the mutual inductance M21 it is coming from the flux linking the second coil due to the current in the first coil and then you divide it by the current of the first coil or the first in the conductor whatever the case may be so here this is lambda 2 1 divided by i1 and remember because this is coming from a, this is coming from uh, uh, you are integrating the b1 over the cross section of the second conductor you have to multiply by n2 here it can be shown that m12 is m21 for linear medium if the medium surrounding the two conductors or the two coils is linear it can be shown that these two are equal now I will show you later examples of that. The total magnetic energy of such a system is the magnetic energy stored in the first coil, and this will, will obtain an expression for it very soon in terms of B and H, and the magnetic field stored in the second coil, and the magnetic field stored in the, in the, in the coupling between them, because there are flux lines moving from the first coil to the second coil, flux lines moving from the second coil to the first coil. So uh, this one we already know, it's 1 half I1, L1 I1 squared, this one is one half L2 I2 squared. The W12 is actually equal to one. Uh, actually, it is. This is the total energy, but this one we can divide into two parts. So it can be one half M12 L1 L2 plus one half M21 I2 I1. But because M12 is equal to M21, they simply put it as one term and they remove the one half. Now, if there is a plus or a negative sign plus sign you use when the two currents they create magnetic field that aid one another so the, the, the magnetic field is not opposing one another, they aid one another uh, and the negative sign when they are opposing one another let's see an example on how to calculate the mutual inductance the procedure for calculating the mutual inductance is very similar to the procedure of calculating the, the self-inductance you start by assuming a current in one of the two coils or the two circuits and then get the magnetic field and then calculate the flux linking to the other circuit and then calculate the flux linkage and then divide the flux linkage by the original current of the first circuit this is what we have here let's take a look at this example we have here a wire and we have a loop beside it and uh, here we, we, th we are assuming that we have one turn only of this loop so we'd like to calculate the, the inductance uh, M21, so the coming from the flux linking this uh, this coil, this loop here, due to the to this conductor. So what we do? Assume a current I1 or current I here. We know that if you have a current here, the magnetic field will be in the phi direction. We have an expression for that. It's I over two by rho in the phi direction. Then B at any point in space is equal to mu I over two by rho in the phi direction. It's Tesla, of course. If you want to get the flux going through this circuit, of course, uh, from, from this figure, the magnetic flux lines here are out from the page and on the other side are going into the page. So the, the flux going through this, this coil here is simply the integral over this rectangular cross section of B1 dot ds. This is a field resulting from the first, uh, from the conductor, from the first conductor, from the wire that we have. So you integrate this term here dot ds, ds here of course um, if you draw we draw an element and we have used that before this one here is d rho, this one here is dz and it is in the phi direction it is it's pointing in the third dimension which is the phi direction so um, in that case you are integrating a b phi in the phi direction dot d rho dz in the phi direction a phi dot a phi will give you one this will give you the integral of this term d rho the integral of one over rho will give you lin rho Put upper limit minus lower limit, then you get ln rho 2 over rho 1. You are integrating over the height of the loop. There is nothing here that's a function of z. Z multiplied by h. So this is a flux in the second, in the, in the rectangular uh, loop, due to the current in the wire. Now, the, 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 uh, this flux here will be the same as flux linkage, because we have here a single turn here. If we had n turns, we have to multiply this flux by N2, which is the number of turns of this uh, loop. But here we have only one of them. Then we, uh, this is, is exactly equal to lambda to 1. Then we define by the current I1, which is the current through the wire, 
which is I. So if you divide this expression by I, you get mu of mu h over 2 by ln root 2 over root 1, and this is really the inductance uh, between these two uh, circuits. And of course, if the if the rectangle if the rectangular loop has any tightly wound uh, turns, then uh, the flux linkage will not be epsi to 1. It will be epsi to 1, the flux that you calculated here, due to the field of the first conductor, the field of the wire, multiplied by the number of turns, which is N2, or it's called here N. And the, the, the whole thing will be scaled up by N. So we know we can have uh, more, more, uh, more mutual inductance uh, by increasing the number of turns here of the second wire, as, as was proven. We consider one more example, which is to calculate the uh, self-inductance of a coaxial uh, cable of inner radius A and outer radius B. And uh, we assume the conductors and the electric uh, to be non-magnetic. Even this, this problem is not really a mutual inductance, but it has two conductors. And uh, I think it's very important to take a look at what's happening here in this example. Coaxial cable, we have actually three regions. The first region inside the, the conductor in the, in the center, which is the inner conductor. So there is some flux, there is some flux lines going inside this conductor. And in the dielectric region between the inner conductor and the shield, there is another flux B2 going inside this, this, shield, this, uh, this uh, region here. And then the last one, B3, which is going inside the shield. So in order to calculate the flux, the flux and the flux linkage, we have to find for each region what is B. We have to find D psi, the flux going through a tiny element. We have to find the flux linkage. And remember here, the flux link in the, in the inner conductor to only a fraction of the current. So this is really a generalization of the, this is exactly the same case that we had earlier in this lecture for the case of a thick conductor. So we calculated the, the, um, the inductance of the inner part. Uh, we have inductance due to the field in the region between the, the, the inner conductor and the shield. And we have inductance due to the shield itself. And we have to sum all three. Now, the inductance through to the, to, the, to the inner conductor, we have already calculated that. This is the same as the inductance of a thick conductor. We took a small, uh, a small annual ring and we calculated the flux. We calculate the flux linkage and we agreed that it links only to a fraction of the current I and uh, we found out the expression for that. So for the inner conductor, the field, we already calculated that, the field increases with rho, mu I rho over 2 by A squared and this inside the inner conductor and we were able to calculate the flux linkage, this was done earlier in this lecture, it is mu I L over 8 by, then the internal inductance of the, of the conductor is mu i over 8 by. Now we have to consider the second region. Second region is the region between the inner conductor and the shield. We, we applying Ampere's law, uh, we, and we did that earlier, we were able to show that the magnetic field inside H is i over 2 by rho in the phi direction. Then B in the, <coughs> excuse me, B in the, in the region between the, the inner conductor and the shield is given by h multiplied by mu. Now, if you want to carry out the integral, so this is the inner conductor, and this is the, sh the, uh, the inside radius of the shield. If I want to carry out an integral of the flux, I have to integrate over this cross section, and this cross section here, I'm just showing you uh, the uh, top part of it, but it's actually a rectangular cross section. It has radius d rho, and it has a high dz. And what is shown here is only d rho. So we in order to get the flux, we multiply this uh, thing, this uh, b by dot ds, and ds is d rho dz in the phi direction. This will give you the flux coming through this infinitesimal service element. Um, now we have to do an integration. We have to in integrate that over the whole cross section. Integrate rho from a to b, and integrate z from zero up to l if the length is l. Uh, and you're able to get the total flux going through this line. What is the flux linkage? These flux lines, these flux lines here, these flux lines encircles only the total current I in the middle. So it encircles this current only once. So this is why the flux linkage is the same as flux here in this case. So in this case, as I explained to you earlier, in the, in the region between the inner conductor and the shield, 
the flux lines encloses the current in the inner conductor only once so this is why the flux linkage is equal to the flux and you can get the total flux linkage which is read the total flux by integrating the d psi from a to b and from 0 to l the integral of 1 over rho will give you ln both uh, ln uh, upper limit minus lower limit you get ln b over a the integral of dz will give you z you multiply by l then the by definition of the of the inductance the inductance of the middle part of the coaxial cable is equal to this flux linkage divided by the current i so it's equal to mu l over 2 by ln b over a now for the shield region this is the third region we can consider we have uh, this is the th this region outside we have the inner radius of the shield and the outer radius of the shield now this region is extremely sl slim so the flux there is uh, the flux total flux is weak and in addition we we cover the expression for rho and if you remember when we did that we agreed that the flux was really decaying away from the inner conductor and it decays further inside so the field inside is weak then the shield is the shield is very thin then the total flux is weak then we can ignore and most books actually would ignore the flux the contribution resulting from this flux here so approximately the the the, the inductance of a length l of this uh, of length l of this conductor i hear l is removed here but of course it should be there it should be l here it should have l here um, is mu not uh, mu not l over 2 over 2 by ln b over a this is the inductance of the middle region and this one is mu not l over 2 by multiplied by 1 over 4 i took i wrote this one as 1 over 4 multiplied by 1 half to show you that this term is way bigger than this term why? Because B is usually greater than A, way greater than A. The ln B over A will be a, a 3, 4, 5, a, 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 a number greater than 1. But while this factor is 1 over 4. So effectively, and in many other books, this is what they do. They say that the inductance per unit length, if they take L to be equal to 1, is simply equal to this part when L is equal to 1. And they simply ignore the contribution resulting from the inner conductor. So the conditional from the conductor is usually ignored and they usually take the inductance per unit length here as mu naught over 2 by ln b over a and this one of course would be Henry per meter because we already took the length to be 1 meter.